welcome back to the AWS Studio. I'm here with Tilly Gilbert from STL Partners, and we're going to chat a little bit more about generative AI and how telcos can skill up for success. Tilly, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and your role at STL Partners? Yep, uh, I am a director in the consulting team at STL. I've worked for the company for just over five years now. And as a business, we do research and consultancy services focused entirely on the TMT space. So I want to start by congratulating you on the really exciting launch of the executive briefing. I loved reading it, and I think what I loved most was we talk a lot about the when for generative AI now. Uh, we talk a lot about the what in the use cases, lessons learned, where to get started. But the how is often missed or skipped over. And I think you've done a really good job at telling that story. So how did that narrative approach come about? Yeah, so the paper was born out of all of the interest in the industry that we're seeing at the moment. But what we really wanted to go and do was to go and speak to some actual decision makers on the ground at telecoms operators about what they were doing today, but also how they could perceive what they were going to do in the next six months, year, two years, five years plus. And as you said, what we were really trying to focus on was some of the practicalities. So this is all very exciting. There's a lot of hype in the industry. There's all sorts of potential uh, for generative AI to unlock new growth, but what are the practical steps that you need to undergo to get there? And what should people be thinking about today to make sure that they are on, are on a path to success with generative AI? And I think that's exactly how you kicked off that first chapter, if I remember correctly. You have it aptly titled, The Generative AI Journey Has Many Challenges, But The Destination Is Worth It. Is there a single destination? Does it vary? What did, what did those insights from talking with all of those leaders tell us? So I think the destinations vary, and the strategies to get there vary. Um, we'll see that on a regional basis because, for instance, you've got quite different regional regulation at play, which is forcing and, and making some telecoms operators make different decisions about their generative AI journey than others. But it's also varying a little bit on an operator by operator basis. Um, one of the big things that we saw was that there are some operators who are already starting to actively explore uh, building their own LLM specific for the telecoms industry. And there are others who are more focused on trying to say there are some foundational models that are out there and we would like to leverage those and not try and build our own because that is a huge amount of investment and complexity and we want to see what we can do with, with those LLMs that already exist. So regional differences, but also operator by operator differences in terms of how they're, they're approaching generative AI. But the strategy and vision here, I imagine, far transcends for a given telco-specific LLM. Am I building it myself? Am I working with partners? It's, it's far more than that. It's, it's, it's the culture, it's the decision making, it's the pace. What were some of the other vectors of, of the strategy that you saw considered by leaders? Yeah, I mean, I think there is fundamentally, first and foremost, a sense that this is an, is an opportunity that might both help them save costs, but also potentially open up some new revenue opportunities, particularly in, in providing uh, services, say, to enterprise customers, which are powered by generative AI. Um, so that is a big focus. But then there are also benefits or areas which are tan tangentially related to either cost savings or to revenue growth, which would be things like agility and flexibility and being able to focus the minds of those that work for on innovation rather than on repetitive tasks or um, things that might be able to be sort of better done by, um, by this, these machine learning models. So uh, there's kind of a, a combination of different things that folks are looking for. So lots of really compelling aspirations that were discussed across all the discussions you've had. But you also learned a, uh, a great deal about some of the challenges that were being experienced. I remember one quote banner that, that, that caught my eye was around the talent required, even just right out of school. It's difficult to keep up to get the talent you need to deliver the type of technical assets you're, uh, you're looking to deliver. So my question to you would be, what were the, some of the other challenges that you experienced? Yeah, so challenges, I think, range across the commercial. Yeah. So it's actually quite expensive still today to explore some of this generative AI stuff, stuff you know, in, in, in real life and particularly understanding and building that business case for a technology which is still fairly nascent is a commercial challenge. But then you also see legal and regulatory challenges too. So making sure that when you're making use of data, making use of your own data, maybe even making use of customer data, that you are doing that in an ethical and compliant way. 
And then, as you said, absolutely, skills are also a challenge. And we see a huge amount of recruitment and scarcity around some of these specialist skills in AI. And telecoms operators are up against very large technology companies with very deep pockets who are also trying to recruit and retain that same skill set. So we certainly believe that cloud partners have a major role in helping facilitate that enablement, that training, that hands-on learning. Is that what you heard as well from those discussions? Yeah, I think the telecoms operators are looking to lots of partners, of which the cloud providers are one, to try and understand what can they bring to the table in terms of their own expertise, in terms of the tool sets that they might have, in terms of being able to help advise on things like compliance, in terms of helping with training and with upskilling. So absolutely, I think it's very unlikely that telecoms operators will do this all themselves. And there will be, as we've seen here at MWC, uh, announcements about cross-industry collaboration um, and work done with partners in order to, to really unlock the value that they're interested in. One of the things I, I also really enjoyed about uh, the executive briefing, you didn't just talk about the technical upskilling required, yeah. it was far more cross-functional. You were talking about the impacts to legal teams, to ethics teams, to all of the other organizations that play a role in delivering a product ent internally or externally to customers. What are some of the insights there? Yeah, I mean, one of the great things that generative AI unlocks from a value perspective is it helps to democratize the use of AI across the whole organization. So something that might previously have sat within an AI or a data specialist team within a telecoms operator can now, through natural language processing, be be much more easy for, for anybody to be able to interact with it. And that is what unlocks a lot of the value, but it also means that you need to make sure that not just a small team are upskilled and have knowledge about the risks and rewards, but everyone across your organization who's going to come into contact with these large language models is, is upskilled. And that will mean, for instance, that you will need to have prompt engineering specialists, so people that really know how to make sure that they put in the right information to get out the right response. Um, and that information will need to be disseminated across the organization. So new roles all together beyond the traditional engineer. I thought that, that that's a yeah. really new point. specialist roles and then also a broader skill and upskilling and training for all of the existing roles in a telecoms operator today. I think that's so important. I know here at AWS, we, we really try to deliver that education in as many ways as possible, of which we have this Generative AI Foundations course available on YouTube. I started taking it myself. I think it's a great way to just really get hands on with the technology itself. Were there other asks uh, from the leaders that you discussed with? So new job roles, new opportunities to upskill. Were there other clear asks that they made to the uh, partner ecosystem as a whole to contribute? Yeah, I mean, I think one big area is around this idea of helping them to build out the risk reward model, build out the business case model for investing and sketching out for them a little bit about, for instance, um, most telecoms operator spend comes from their networks. Their networks are fairly unique in what they require and the type of data and the way that they are run. And so I think telecoms operators are looking for the industry to say, we understand how generative AI can impact specifically your networks. So yes, there will be interesting innovation in their IT and in their HR and in their legal teams and, and these things which any large organization has. But a telecoms operator is fairly unique and it runs this big network. and. 70% or more of its OPEX and CAPEX is being spent on running and maintaining that network. So really understanding and getting that deep learning on specifically Gen AI and the networks is, I think, uh, another big element, a big area of what telecoms operators are, are looking to do together with partners in the ecosystem. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about our uh, generative AI uh, portfolio of services, specifically with Amazon Bedrock. What, what we hear from customers in terms of the benefits, certainly low cost performance infrastructure in which it's running, that uh, flexibility and choice of leading foundation models, enterprise grade privacy and security, data first approach. But what have you heard specifically about Amazon Bedrock or our other uh, AWS generative AI services that have impressed or attracted customers the most? I think one of the big things here is that this is still at a stage of exploration for most telecoms operators. And so, as you said, the flexibility and scalability to be able to deploy some of this, um, understand some of the impacts of it on their teams, and then once they're comfortable with it, scale it 
is really fundamental and being able to do that in a cloud first manner, being able to use flexible, scalable cloud infrastructure to help to run, run these initial uh, AI workloads is certainly something else that we've heard the telecoms operators are, are looking for um, as they make their initial inroads. One key theme this year, I would say, has really just been around that next level of generative AI. From your, from your perspective, looking ahead, what are you most excited to see from the industry as a whole, and specifically uh, the, the clients and partners you've had a chance to, to, to communicate with? I think it will be a, really about, as you said, scaling it, and it will be about getting this really embedded across an organization. And a lot of telecoms operators have made big commitments in terms of what they're going to do over the next 10 years. Uh, they are looking to rationalize their workforce. They're looking to become very efficient and agile. They're looking to, many of them have net zero targets that they're looking to achieve. Um, and so seeing how generative AI and AI in general perhaps becomes embedded into all of those things rather than becoming a, you know, rather than being a pillar, it, it becomes an underlying uh, piece of sort of infrastructure across everything else will be very interesting um, to see. I think you have such a unique position, Tilly, with the, with the research that you've done to really provide practical advice to customers who are engaging for that first time with generative AI that are really focused on that destination but haven't quite figured out where to start. What are maybe some areas that you'd recommend them take a look at? So I think there are some earlier use cases where we are seeing most telecoms operators start. And it's for a number of reasons why they may want to start there and because perhaps it's a little bit more simple from a data collection and integration perspective because some of the risks are perhaps a little bit lower. Um, the obvious ones would be, we've certainly seen quite a few telecoms operators looking at knowledge management systems. So looking at being able as an employee to ask questions of a large language model to understand how the organization works, to understand, say, the networks. If you are not trained and don't have a deep history as an engineer, but you still in your role need to be able to understand how network performance is impacting customers. So we've seen early traction there. Um, there's also some use cases which can really help to create an, a synthetic environment which can enable partners and others to innovate within. So things like using uh, generative AI for code creation um, to help t partners who you maybe don't necessarily want to let loose in your live network deployment because you're concerned about that because your network is your one key value proposition for customers and the reliability and the performance and the resilience of that is key but helping to create these synthetic environments which can enable partners to innovate and enable you to test out new solutions and see the impact of them on your network. These are some of the areas where we're seeing initial traction and where we think most telecoms operators will start. And then as we move forward, it will be more looking to uh, deployments live in the network and, and understanding how that, that can really transform their business. So many great opportunities, of course, so many fantastic use cases, and really grateful to have had this published research around what customers are actually saying. We're always working backwards from customers, and really great to see the insights that you're able to collect. So on behalf of the industry, thank you. Um, I want to encourage everyone tuning in to this to take a read of the executive briefing. You can find it in the notes of this very video. I want to thank you, Tilly, for joining us. Pleasure speaking with you, and hope you enjoy the rest of MWC. Thanks for having me.